Hey everybody, it's Jenny Clark with Solvability and today we've got another Freedom Friday with Russ Barnes. So Russ is coming to us from Tampa Bay and we've all got our headsets on because I think it looks cool and I wanted to look as smart as Russ. So Russ is going to talk to us a little bit today about product development strategy and if you haven't talked to him about strategy in general, this is why we're having him on board because he's changed how I Operate and a lot of other people. He's got a lot of wisdom to share. So I'm going to let you, Russ, introduce yourself and then just take it away. All right. Thanks a lot, uh, Russ Barnes. Uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about myself later because I want to jump into this. You know, as, as Jenny said, um, you know, I'm really focused in on, on, on strategy and strategy development. And there's a difference. Um, with with strategy, it is the actual kind of things that you implement, but strategy development has to do with the way you think. And when I talk to business owners, no matter what level they're on, uh, there's this level of complexity that uh, creates a constant challenge. And what makes it difficult is the uncertainty about whether or not the decisions you're making or the actions you're taking are actually leading you to where you want to be. So my journey has been to figure out how at every level we can just keep it simple. How do you keep it simple? And so, you know, if you're like Jenny, you know, these ideas kind of flow like water. And after a while, you feel like it's drowning you. It's like, what do I, you know, I have all these ideas. I want to implement the, all these ideas. Where do I put them? How do I manage them? How do I, you know, take, you know, and I want to get them all in and the bucket's not big enough. So how do I manage all that? And, and that's what has been my journey. And that's what my, that's my love and my passion is, is, you know, to kind of keep it simple. You kind of fight for clarity and then you prioritize. So those are really the, the, the kind of the big things uh, that I love to do and that I focus on. Um, just a little bit about me very quickly, because I, I know most of you and I'm always on Friday, Freedom Friday. I hate to miss Freedom Friday, but uh, I served 27 years in the, in the Air Force as a B-52 rated navigator. Uh, and then I sent, I spent... Um, so I spent 11 years flying, and then I spent 16 years on higher headquarters staff, you know, the Pentagon, European Command, Central Command, um, Strategic Command. Uh, I was a joint staff officer, so I got to do a lot of joint work with all the different services, so I understand their cultures and I know their secrets. And uh, then when I retired, I decided I didn't want to work for anybody ever again. Uh, I went into uh, becoming an entrepreneur, and this is where this entire journey about uh, being able to be purposeful and intentional in what you do on a daily basis, you know, um, started. And so, uh, so that's kind of, you know, le leading into it. And what I'm going to do today is I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to, I know Jenny's going to hate this, but I'm actually going to throw up some slides very quickly. I'm going to go through them very quickly, like five seconds each, five to 10 seconds each. I'm not going to talk about them, um, but I want you to see them because when you have the visual, then that makes it easier for us to have a conversation around it. And when we talk about mapping, mapping is the power of the mapping is the visual. So when, um, you know, when, when Jenny would have all the great ideas and we get on the whiteboard and we'd map it, then she could see the whole big picture and then say, okay, now I understand where I can put things. I can prioritize things. That's important, but I don't need to think about that right now. And then I can go focus on the thing that is, um, most significant. And a matter of fact, if I take care of this right now, that will actually solve a problem for three other things that I have coming down the line. So when you can kind of see that, it's it's very powerful. And again, it's keep it simple. So it's not a very complicated uh, process that you go through. And when you see it, you're going to go, oh, yeah, okay, that's, that's, that's pretty simple. But it's the way you execute it. It's how it helps you think. And it's how it helps you communicate with others that makes it so powerful. Hey, and Russ, I wanted to add something to that. Sure. What you did for me is you said, how do you measure that? How do you know what your results are going to be? Which is all of that's really hard for me because I just want to wander around and create ideas and hope that somehow this mess comes from, you know, comes back together. But you pretty much helped me braid it all into one thing. So it worked. And the other thing is you turned around to me and when I was getting down, you'd go, well, you've accomplished this, this, this and this. And it would get me back where I needed to be, get back to center, because so much of this is mindset. Exactly, exactly. So much of it is absolutely mindset. And so starting out with the keep it simple concept, you know, my strategy, my definition of strategy is a keep it simple. It's how do you get from where you are to where you want to be? 
And I've been working with some teams and I've been teaching them, you know, the, uh, the, the process and, and, and the mission mapping and everything. And I give them the definition. I say, the definition of strategy is how to get from where you are to where you want to be. And I say, okay, tell me the definition of strategy. And they say, well, it's going from one place to another. I know, no, no, how to get from where you are to where you want to be. And I make them say it exactly like that because when you say it that way, there are three components. Where do you want to be? Where are you? And how do you get there? And when you just think about things in that term, then it really reduces your anxiety. It reduces your uncertainty because one of the first things Jenny and I did was when we started, I said, well, you know, what, what is your intention for the people who are attending this conference? And this was last year. And so we, we lined that out and now all of a sudden you have incredible clarity because, well, if this is where we want to be, and this is how many people we need to bring in then, and this is how what type of people we need to bring in in order for them to get that outcome and that result, and then, you know, so on and so on and so on. And, uh, and it works really well. So Stephanie's seen these slides. Uh, I'm gonna put them up for just a, a quick second so all of you can see them. Uh, again, I'm just gonna go through and show you what's on them, and then I'm going to stop the share and we're gonna have a conversation about what you saw and what interested you. So first slide, business fundamentals. Business fundamentals for the game of GovCon, how it's applied, how they apply. Business fundamental number one, you're selling something you need to be selling something. You need to know what you're selling. <laughs> you need to know what you can sell. Cultivating relationships. Research. And then we get into the mapping piece. It's just a visual representation of that definition of strategy, where you are, where you want to be, and how do you get there. So this is what it looks like as a generic strategy development process. And again, this, this you could say is a strategy, but it's not really, it's just, these are the components. But now with this visual, you can see the gaps. You can see what you know, you can see what you don't know. You can see what you have to do. Above the line are the big rocks, below the line are the things that you need to do in order to execute what's above the line. Instead of going from uh, the left side, from, from there to the end, you also now say, you know what? I only need to go from one to two. I need to go from past performance to certifications. And you focus on that, you get it done, and then you look at whatever. If an opportunity comes up, you can just take advantage of that opportunity and then you can continue to move forward. Um, this is a, a your kind of a strategy. This is, you can break it down and do a 90 day sprint. And then that's this. These are just some other things, some resources, some counseling, some other people, the books, uh, subcon expert coming up, subcon coming up, and then that's it. So, what do you want to talk about in that? Where do you want to focus in that list of things? There's really just two things there's the business fundamentals, and then there's the milestone mapping. We could do votes, couldn't we? Because yes. there's polls here. And so you've got a Freedom Friday poll already set up, right? So I can hit launch Ooh. polling for us. And let's so. ask the audience, Russ, everybody <laughs> jump in there, figure out what you want the answer to be. Of course, now I'm trying to remember, how do I do a poll? Hmm. So he's written down selling strategies, pipeline management, business development, indirect rates and pricing. He just put that in there for me. Um, capability statements, because that's a really big thing. You Until you have a list of what you're going to sell, you can't do your marketing documentation. And one of the oh. things I always see, Russ, is when a small business will have like 80 things oh. on their codes. It's like, I, I don't think that's really great that you're going to try well, to do it that way. So, so let's start here, because let's start here and let's talk about mapping. This is an excellent idea or perspective on mapping. So you know you have to do all of these things, but now are they in any type of an order that will enable you to uh, prioritize effectively and make sure that you're doing the right thing at the right time? So I would take all of these, I would put it on that, that, that line that I showed you, and then I would go below the line, go below the line and say, so we're selling strategies, 
what are the selling strategies that I in my industry need to focus on in order to be most effectively, most rapidly? What's closest to the dollar? What's going to take you know, a lot longer to build the relationships that I need in order to be able to make the connections and get those, get those contracts? And the beauty of this is not so much you that you think through it alone, but now you can bring your team in, you get on a whiteboard, you put the line on the whiteboard, you put these things on the board, and now you begin to have conversations around it. And yeah, is, is um, Lean Six Sigma great? Is uh, pro, uh, project management and, and, and all those things and, and Gantt charts and, and all those things are wonderful, but sometimes just the complexity of that chart makes it difficult to have the conversation. If you just do it on a map, then it makes it a lot easier for people to intuitively say, oh, you know what, I can see a gap, or I can see where we can add something else down here. Or you know what, we, don't, we can't do that down there, we have to do that over here. And now you just begin to shift and change and, and, and so forth. And it's just a tremendous uh, communication tool. Well, what's really interesting about the poll re results, because people have voted, is their selling strategies came out well and business development and pipeline management capability statement and finding opportunities and teaming strategies. And so this is just like a session you might be having with your own team where we all know we need this stuff, but we're overwhelmed by the list. And that's what always happens to me. So how do you get around that, Russ? So then as you begin to have, you know, um, ideas like you do, you know, you say, oh, this, this idea came up. Now, what those uh, components actually turn out to be is they, I call them bins, because now you have these bins and you can say, that's a great idea. I can put it in this bin. I don't have to work on it right now today, but I, I feel confident because now I know I won't lose that idea. I know it won't be uh, uh, lost and I can... When, when, it, when there's a better time for me to address that, then I can, I can take care of that. The other thing is, you know, everybody in this room knows that uh, you cannot anticipate in any way, shape or form what's going to happen in the environment around your business. You know, so, you know, we, when you talk about COVID-19, no one could anticipate that COVID-19 was gonna happen. But let's just, you know, so when we put together the map and we set our outcome, I like to work with business owners and say, you need to have outcomes both in terms of meaningfulness as well as money. And when we look at the money, if you say, you know what, I want my company to generate, you know, $5 million in revenue in 2021, then you can actually break that down and say, what does that mean in terms of contracts? Do I go after 10 million, you know, five, I don't know how much I said, let's say I said 50 million, let's say 50 million. Do I go after... Uh, five, ten million dollar contracts, or do I go after twenty five million dollar contracts, or you know how do I shape that and how do I frame that? And then um, you can now tap that back to your capabilities. So now, when COVID, when something like COVID comes around, you say, you know what, our goal is to get those types of contracts with COVID uh, impacting our environment this way. What types of things can we do that help us to stay on track and navigate despite the environment, so that we can still achieve the desired outcome that we're looking for. So that's a way you can kind of take a look at that. Well, Russ, you make a really good point when you talk about, um, I want to get, let's say I'm a small business and I've got $3 million annual revenue, which is, you know, I'm, I'm cooking along. I still got a lot to do, but I've had people call me up and say, well, Jenny, in 2021, I want to get $5 million more in contracts. Mm -hmm. And I'll look at, I'll say, well, this is February. Mm -hmm. Did you start that plan back two years ago? Because that's what it's going to take. And you know who else talks to me about this? Michael Lejeune with RSM Federal. He said, if, you gotta, if you're planning to have $5 million in worth of revenue, you got to go after $50 million in proposals. And you start doing that, it's like overwhelming. And that's why coming back to the plan you made is why yep. it makes such a difference. Yeah, so two things happen there. Once you map it out, and then you look at the bottom line, you can then ask yourself the question, is this realistic? And if it's not realistic, then you can readjust what you are looking at. You can either say, okay, if it's, if it's not realistic from the monetary standpoint, then what, different, what, what types of uh, modifications do I need to make? You know, if it's not realistic from the production capability or the capacity or the capability 
uh, perspective, you can ask yourself, is there anything we can do to increase and improve our capability and our capacity? So now the whole idea is being able to ask the right questions, but now you have a framework for asking the right questions instead of just trial and error. And let's just try this and see if it works. And it removes again, that sense of uncertainty because now you can, you can as bring other minds in and other brains in to, um, to, to take a look at that. Uh, so, the other thing yeah. that I think is so important about what you're saying is what we're talking to people at is don't say, okay, I'm going to hop up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit a home run. Mm -hmm. You're creating a practice of it. And I always like for you to talk about learning skills and developing skills from your background, like basketball or whatever, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. So when we go back to the business, basic business fundamentals, you know, even when you're doing business with the government, you have to sell. At some point, you have to sell because you have to figure out who it is who is actually buying from you, what problem is it that you're solving, and, and how you do that. So the selling piece, the cultivating relationships, and then the, uh, the research, and I equate them in, from basketball. So selling is like, so the basic fundamentals of business are uh, dribbling, passing, and shooting. If you can't do those things, you cannot play the game of basketball. Uh, at a basic level. And this is these are the things we teach the two-year-olds when they start playing basketball. This is how you dribble. This is how you shoot. Pass the ball to your teammates because you don't want to hog the ball. <laughs> and so when it comes to business, shooting, selling is like shooting because that's how you score. You know, that's how you win the game. Um, dribbling is like uh, research. You know, that's how you advance. That's how you move forward with the knowledge that you're acquiring in business, but you're advancing the ball, the team with that. And then, of course, cultivating relationships is uh, is passing. You know, you're building the team and, and you're working with the team. So, you know, I love the, the 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 sports analogies and the connections to it like that because business is a game, and it has rules, it has fundamentals, it has uh, you know coaching, it has uh, scorekeeping. You know, everything that you associate with a game, you can associate with business. And if you kind of look at it that way too, it gives you a perspective and a mentality on, on how you're doing it. Are you playing according to the rules? Have the rules changed? Um, are you putting together the team of people who are going to enable you to win the championship? You know, you look at, you know, what LeBron James did with Miami and what, you know, the Boston Celtics did with Kevin Garnett and all those, you know, they say, oh, let's get a bunch of guys together who can uh, now win and do that. And then LeBron went and did the same thing with the Lakers. So. Uh, you can do the same thing with your business. You look and say, who are the most talented people? Um, how do they how I pursue them? How do I bring them on board? And that kind of falls into that that uh, that category. So the whole idea behind this this mission mapping, the business fundamentals, all of these things is no matter how complex things get, if you just go back to those basics and say, what are we selling and who are we selling it to? How are we selling it? Are we hunting, fishing, or farming? You know, then you go look at, you know, um, what relationships are we building and who do we need to build them with? In this time of COVID, you know, who would be the best people to know? You might want to know people in the health industry because then they could give you some sense of this. You might want to know people at FEMA because the people at FEMA have been planning for these types of things for a very long time and they can really tell you where they're going to need help and assistance. You, you, you might have a product that would be perfectly suited to solve the problems that they have already been anticipating for years, but they may not already have decided who they need to talk to in order to solve those problems. So cultivating those relationships, and of course you would, you would then do that research by talking to people from FEMA who would give you the information you need to know so that then you can make the adjustments to the environment and achieve your desired outcome. Yeah, I think relationships are really important federal contracting because you're not going to sell to a person that you pick out on that day. You've got to develop a relationship so they know, like, and trust you over time. And then they might start answering your questions, but they're not going to go out of their way. I know I wouldn't for um, giving somebody that hasn't done their homework. And you and Emily are going to have a session like that at GovCon, aren't you? We are. Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, business owners who come in and they think that the government is a vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, so I'm going to put in my bid and then I'm going to get this uh, $50 million contract and I'm going to be off and running and I'll figure out how to do it once I get the contract. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really work with that way. And that's part of the reason why we're creating all of this is to say, 
you know, we want to work with people that are serious about growth and can understand uh, in, want to understand instructions that will do a lot of the homework. We'll do a lot of the reading on the books that we're publishing and the podcast content that you've got, Russ. It's all about creating a learning community so we can learn from each other because I always say that I want to be working with people that up my game. Right. That's right. And, you yeah. know, we're talking about people that, you know, they were on JV, now they're on the varsity, mm-hmm. now they're playing college basketball. And then, yeah. you know, what do they want to play? Are they always going to stay in the farm league? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, the, the, and the other thing about this uh, keep it simple process that, that I'm, I'm creating, and, and that's, you know, that's, that's so key and important. I can make this complex just like a lot of other people do and, and make myself look really great in that. But it's not about that. It's about getting the results and getting the outcomes. And so the other thing that is factored into this is business owners don't want to be told what to do. You know, they don't want somebody to come in and say, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Because, you know, that's, that's restricting. If they wanted to do that, they would probably just, you know, um, you know put themselves in that type of an environment. Um, so... It, you want to exercise your creativity and this type of a framework enables you to maximize your ability to use your creativity. And I think that's the thing you saw that when we worked together and, and map this thing out and put it together, that now you didn't have to lose any of your creativity. You could funnel it, you could channel it, you could put it in a bin and you could prioritize it. And then you could get to it when you needed to get to it. And when you needed help, because you said, you know what, I would love to do that, but I don't have the time to learn how to do all that stuff. Now you could say, okay, do I have enough resources to go ahead and bring somebody in who can do that for me faster, better, and more effectively? Well, and what you're talking about is how you create a mastermind of people that are part of your team, whether they're peers or um, somebody else you know. You've got to have um, that group. And one of the people in our group these days is Carmine Denisco. And Carmine, I think you kind of had some thoughts to add to what Russ is saying. Yeah, one, you know, Russ and I have always uh, agreed on a lot of this and 100%, you really don't want to start anything unless, you know, you obviously have a path, you're organized and things in that sense. And being creative is part of that, putting on paper and saying it out loud and doing that. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's going to be really great, all the things that we're going to talk about, but putting those things down and being creative is just so important to start with any process. Yeah, it's, it's just a matter of it's just a matter of thinking it through. And people will tell you, know your numbers, think it through, have a strategy. And they tell you that you need to do these. And everybody nods their head, yes. But how many people can do it and can actually do it? I wanted to say one other thing about the milestone map. You could create a map for your overall, and then you can nest. I've been working with Action Zone, and so the executive director created a map for what she's responsible for, and then. The business development person created a map that supported that. And then the director of, uh, of uh, ecosystem development created one, the director of business, business development, the director of education, everybody then created maps that supported the main map. And now when you start having conversations, everybody's on the same page. And it just makes it so much easier to have those types of conversations. Well, it's definitely setting everybody up to be understanding each person's role and appreciating it because otherwise you're in a meeting and um, people are giving out action items. And, and sometimes it's real easy to shrink back and say, oh, I, I missed that, I missed that. And this is a little bit about accountability too, Russ. It is, yeah, it really is. And, and now though, you're not holding somebody accountable forcibly, you're, you're allowing their creativity to come into the conversation and it's a very good uh, communication and a collaboration. So, um, so I'm excited. I'm, I'm happy I had a chance to come in and at least share that because I guess you can, you know, you can tell my enthusiasm <laughs> and, well, uh, and I've, I've seen such success with it that I just love what I do. Well, I'm so glad that you were able to be here with us today, Russ, talking about mission mapping and strategy development and all of that. So, um, no, we're, we've finished up our time here on Freedom Friday and I look forward to having you present more of this content through the book that's coming out February the 9th and also at GovCon Summit. So we'd love it if people would go to solvability.com slash GovCon Summit and get signed up. Uh, We've got a great group coming. Stephanie, I know you were one of the first people to sign up. So thank you for doing that. Um, Todd, you've supported it every year. Cindy's been a part of it. So really looking forward to seeing what we can create. My job with GovCon Summit is really to amplify everybody's voices so we can all be successful in whatever we choose to do. So 
Thanks everybody for being on today and we'll see you for the next Freedom Friday.